Hello YouTubers, the new Time Travel Jaime 88. I'm back with another video review. And tonight I'm doing another Star Trek VHS review. It is Star Trek Arena episode 19 of the original series. And I gotta tell you, this is one of my favorite Star Trek shows of all time. I love this episode. Anyway, before we get start this review, I would like to give a quick shout out to the Tugboat Dude 98. The Tugboat Dude 98, if you're watching my videos, your videos are super awesome. Keep up the good work and make sure to check out his channel on YouTube. Okay, on to this tape. Uh, this is a very awesome episode. Now, in this episode, the Enterprise are arrive on Celtus 3 and Kirk and his landing party beam down to the Federation Observation Outpost. However, Commod his commander, Commodore Travers, arrive and discover that the colony is destroyed. So, Mr. Spock discovers that the life forms, the landing party become under attack as O'Hurley dies almost immediately, disintegrates, and then the shelding begins. At the same time, the USS Enterprise was under attack in orbit by the unidentified ship with the deflector screens up. Unfortunately, the Enterprise cannot beam the landing party. So, Kirk has to come up the all way by creating to stop this bombardic alien by using fire with grenade launchers resembling a Motar to survive an internal bombardment. So, Kirk and the surviving members of the landing party are able to return to the Enterprise. The aliens are afraid of the resonous decamp to their own ship. Meanwhile, back on the Enterprise, Kirk concluded that the Celtus III was a trap in an attempt to destroy the Enterprise. The only protection that part of the Federation, such as a move, a prelude to an invasion, and a course correction, correct course overtakes and destroys the enemy before they can turn home. In the briefing lounge, Kirk ordered a hot pursuit. However, Mr. Spock a disagree argues against a destroying enemy vessel. So, Kirk disagree his opinion. The crime has been committed. The Enterprise is closing at warp ape and a scanning beam an unclear solar system. However, the alien began slowing and a sub light speed. Kirk cl close for. The kill, and then the Enterprise began to slow and quietly stop down. On screen, they call themselves the Metron, an advice of the Purdue Space a proposal and unaccepted. So Kirk was vanished from the Enterprise and the Goran captain from his vessel, and is to survive between death or war. So the Goran like captain is retaliating. Large and very strong, but Qu Kirk is able to invade him. But those, but, but he knows he cannot invade him. They had he had to find a way to defeat an opponent. Meanwhile, the USS Enterprise is dead in space. As Spock is in command and watch Kirk and Gorn fight into the battle. So Kirk narrowly in in. Invading the death of Glow's Gorn's claw. The Gorn finally communicates and proposed to Kirk to cease trying to invade him. As Kirk compared offered to the mercy shown at Celtus 3, the this arranged Gorn who tells Kirk his people regard as part of the space where they repel from the invading force. As the fr fires Kirk he fires a makeshift cannon and uh, trying to kill 
the Garn, but he says no. Kirk had won the contest, but stopped the shorting. He yells out the unseen Meltron that he won't kill Gorn. The Metron appears and expresses the surprise. The analysts do not prepare for them Kirk's demonstration of mercy towards his helpless opponent. Although humanity is still half savage, the Metron returns both participants to their ship and the Enterprise is transported 500 years per sec, roughly 6,010 light years away from the previous location. So, that's what the Enterprise did. And my opinions of Star Trek Arena is a well good episode from director Joseph Pepney. And even though this is his um, his first direct Star Trek directing debut. And it's a good accidental music by Fred Steiner. Wonderful job. So I give this story 5 out of 5. So let's take a look. Here's Arena. In this original and uncut television series, the original NBC broadcast. Here's the Gorn. The front. The spine. The other spine. The top. And the back. Trek Trivia. Most of these episodes were shot on location of Vacas Road. I mean, rocks. And feature the front that has been used in the cage. Arena marks the first use of Universal Translator. The voice of the Metron was provided by Vic Perrin, who supplied the voice of the baby Belloc in the Corbin Might Maneuver. It is originally air date on January 20, 19, 1967, and it started 3145.6. It's not rated. And here's what the tape comes in with the sticker label. In label, the print date, May 26, 1993. Okay, that's it for this week's episode. And if you'd like to rate, comment, and subscribe, please do so. Oh, one more thing. At the end for this particular episode, it has the Desi Lou logo without the 1978 copyright bylaw. And followed by the Paramount Television 1981 Blue Mountain logo and the film variant. Anyway, thanks for watching and take care.